Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming out. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching out from the west side of that old town, but there's no show. So, like, oh, so Zo, hey, what is up, guys? Man, we are so excited that you are tuning in to the live stream tonight. We are live on Instagram. Instagram, on Facebook, on our website, as well as on YouTube. So wherever you're watching, go ahead, take that link, share it to someone, get some friends in on tonight's message. It's so good. They're not going to want to miss it. Man, hey, I wanted to hop into a couple things before we hit our message tonight. And first, follow us on Instagram. It's at SozoYTH. That's Sozo YTH, and you can subscribe to us on YouTube at Victory Students. We can get all that content into your hands. Don't miss it. Turn on the notifications. Turn on that bell, and we can get you guys that content. Man, next, I just want to let you know, in case you've forgotten, or if you're brand new here, first off, welcome. But we have small groups tonight right after service. We got small groups, they're being done via Zoom. Your small group leaders cannot wait to hang out with you and just build that community, build that relationship. We find freedom in small groups. So go ahead, if you're new, if you're not already in a group, if you're in one, we got you covered. You already got your code, you're good. If you're not and you're like, hey, what do I do? How do I get involved? Go ahead, text right below either of these keywords to 81010 and we will get you connected. Man, next, I just wanted to hit you guys with something that we have been talking about for months if you've been watching us, and that's Encounter Conference 2020. Man, it's going to be so good. We're so excited for what God is going to do through Encounter Conference and through you while you're there. So as our team's just kind of been processing everything that's happening with, uh, with the coronavirus and with COVID-19, all that craziness, we have currently pushed registration back. It's opening up May 1st, but stay tuned to our Instagram. It's at EncounterConf, that's C-O-N-F dot P-G-H, as well as you can go to our website, EncounterConference.info for more updates. Stay plugged in, stay tuned and connected, and we'll hit you with any new updates that there is. Man, couple more things and then we're going to hop into our message. If you're looking to give, you can give online at myvfc.info slash give or you can text to give. It's super, super easy. It's what I do uh, every two weeks. It makes it so, so simple. You can just text to give, hit a dollar amount, boom, you're done. So don't forget if you're doing that, you can easily do that through our website. Lastly, Pastor Ben Archer is bringing the word tonight. Man, it's going to be so good. I don't want you guys to miss it. So go ahead, share the stream, and take a look at this. Welcome, everybody. I'm Pastor Ben, and I'm so excited to be with you right now. You know, we're in a brand new series called The You Effect, and I'm really excited about it. Today, we're going to be talking about being unbalanced in life, and especially spiritually, but it all starts with understanding how God has created you and who He's created you to be. Now, with that said, I want to take a moment, and I want to, I want to welcome everybody that's tuning in online. You know, this is, during this time, it's been so amazing as the body of Christ. Christ as, as the church family and just what we're doing and you know Pastor John has said and, and even, even the leaders in our church, you, you've heard many times that we are one church in multiple locations. And But you know what's so awesome is during the coronavirus, we've actually been one church in 
thousands of locations all across the country and, uh, and even in other countries. So it's just amazing. Just want to say hi. And in fact, those of you that are watching right now, if you could go ahead and like the video and also comment where you're tuning in from. Share with us. We want to have conversation with you. We want to hang out with you. We miss you dearly. And then go ahead and share the stream, whatever you're watching, wh whatever platform, and just share so that other people can be included um, and, and along in our journey. And then also grow growing in a relationship with Jesus. It's just very powerful. In fact, we've had so many people all over the place tuning in and it's just amazing. You gotta know that people are being ministered to. In fact, I wanted to just give a shout out real quick to Addison in Iowa. It's just amazing that she got joined into our community because of us going live. So we just wanna welcome you. I'm so excited to see you in small groups. You know, so many people are being ministered to. It's just amazing right now what God can do in the midst of chaos. Come on, somebody. And so we welcome you. We love you. And, uh, you know, you can also, if you've missed out on, on what we've been talking about over the past few weeks, you can always get caught up to speed by going to YouTube where we have other messages. And, and you can go to Victory Students, follow along hit subscribe, turn on the bell and, and stay in tune with what we're doing as a community. And after today's message, we're also gonna have small groups. So, so if you're watching right now and you're not plugged into a small group, go ahead and, and text this information. Get plugged into a small group right after the message. It's amazing what happens in community when believers come together. Come on, somebody. You know, I also wanna encourage you, uh, students, don't, don't go to groups alone. Invite somebody with you. Send the information that your small group leader has sent you to them so that they can join your, your Zoom group. And, and like I said, if you're not plugged into our family already, you can text that information to be plugged in. Uh, it's just amazing what God's doing. And bring somebody with you. Don't go alone. Bring them with you. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to open up our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And while we're turning there, I want to remind you and share with you why we exist as a church and a youth group. We exist to help all people, all people realize that God loves them unconditionally. And every single time we gather together, and I know right now it's just been virtual, but as we come together, I really believe that you'll begin to know God. You get the tools and the resources every time we come together to grow in relationship with Jesus. Amen. So I wanna encourage you to take notes because note takers are history makers. I say it every single time I communicate. It's so true. Store up God's word in the well of your heart because in due time, he'll bring it up and out of you. And if you're good at taking notes, go ahead and, and post it on Instagram, share it to your story, tag us, so the YTH, so we can invite those that are in our community to follow along with us and stay up to date and just share the gospel because note takers are history makers. So good. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now this is Paul talking. Now watch what he says. Now may the God of peace, the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until that day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Paul was sharing that we're to keep ourselves blameless until Jesus comes again. But he's also giving us great insight to our makeup and, 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 and how we get our value and worth and, and what makes you, you. See, in life, you and I, we can become unbalanced. We can, we can become upside down and we might not even know that we're unbalanced, but, but what makes you unbalanced? It starts with you understanding what makes you, you. So what makes you, you? And once you understand that, then you will know where you need to spend time so that you're not spending time on stuff you don't need to be spending time on. And we are, you and I, we are a three-part being. And in order for us to not be unbalanced in life, we need to give focus to what matters. Today, we're gonna to be talking about being unbalanced spiritually. And, and you could go ahead and write down the title of our talk. It's, it, it's called The Upside Down. The Upside Down, <laughs> that's right. The Upside Down, write that down. And listen, I'm just gonna believe and I'm gonna pray right now for us that, that in our community and everyone who's under the sound of my voice right now that, that God is gonna encourage us. He's gonna sharpen us and we're gonna walk in relationship with Jesus. We're, we're in a new, stronger relationship with him. We're gonna become even closer. And you know, when we get into God's word, it strengthens us, it heals us, it mends us, and it, and it helps us chase after Jesus. And so we're gonna be praying for that today. Can we all bow our heads? Heavenly Father, 
I just thank you for your word today. Lord, I thank you that as we jump in, um, that, that you're doing a miracle in us right now, God, that as we hear your word, Lord, that it strengthens us, it heals us, it mends us, God. It's doing such a mighty work in us. And Lord, let every word that comes out of my mouth during this service, God, let, let it be of you and anything that is of me. Father, let it fall to the ground and, and produce no fruit. But Lord, we just thank you. We chase after you. Open our eyes so we can see you, Jesus, and open our ears so we can hear the Holy Spirit. Do what you can in this time and in this setting. In Jesus' name, come on, everyone said amen and amen. I'm just excited for what God has for us in our community. Come on. So, so I wish right now I could see by a show of hands, but I can't. So I'm going to need you to put into the comments right now how many of us have actually been on an airplane. Go ahead and put it, put it in the comments. Like I've been there, I love flying, or I don't like it, like whatever it looks like. If you've flown on an airplane, drop it in the comments below. And I got to tell you that over the last few years that I've become an avid flyer. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not frequent. It flying, but I fly about three to five times every single year. And, and one of the craziest things, maybe you can relate with me, uh, relate to me, but one of the craziest things is every single time I make it to the airport and I go through TSA checkpoints, I don't know what happens, but I get so worked up. I start sweating, my heart's racing, and it's just, I, I, I go crazy inside. And maybe, maybe it's because everybody's eyes, they're like, all the agents, they're like eyeballing me. They're eyeballing everybody, but I just feel like you're looking at me, like I'm looking at you looking at me like <laughs> and they, they can almost persuade you with their eyes and their actions like you've done something wrong maybe maybe it's because I've spent most of my life watching cops I don't know what it is I love cops not live PD no I ain't talking about that today no and ain't nobody got time for that but but cops there's something to be said if you're if you're one of the longest airing television shows like come on somebody shout out to cops and it makes me sweat every time even to this day it's crazy but 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 I gotta tell you that one time I got, I got flagged by TSA going through a checkpoint at, at the, the Pittsburgh airport. And I remember as I was going through, the, the, and, and, and I, they, they make you take off your shoes and they're, they're eyeballing you and, and you got to take off your belt and you got to take your laptop out of your bag. And I sent it all through the machine. And, and one of the agents, he's like, sir, sir, I do, I, you, you, sir, you got to step over here, sir, sir. And it's like, it's almost like there's like little sirens like, woo, 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 like over here, sir. You're getting arrested, <laughs> you know? And so he calls me over and he's like, sir, we got to check your laptop. Um, is this yours? Is this your laptop? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I'm sweating, like, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I already feel guilty enough walking through line, right? Like, and, and so he's, he begins to swab my laptop and, the, and there's this other guy there, this big dude, he's jacked, right? His muscles are huge, bigger than my head. And he's just sitting there, he's got like his shotgun around his neck, it's in between his arms and he's just, he's got the smolder going on, he's smoldering me, he's like, like The Rock, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, you know, it's just great, and I'm sweating, and I'm like, I got extreme cotton mouth, I'm, it's hot, and, and, and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yes, yes, I'm okay. And like, at that point, at that point, if you were to ask me, did you do it? I, no matter what it is, I'd probably be like, yeah, I did it. I'm so, so like, yeah, I'm so sorry. God, forgive me. Like, even though I didn't do anything, I don't know what it is. You know, and so I went through and everything's fine, but I feel like I, I always have a story at the airport. It's always crazy. I always got a unique story in, but... But I got to tell you, every single time I fly, no matter what it is, two things always pop in my mind when I sit down in my seat at, at, on the airplane. Two things. Number one, I'm always so thankful, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude that my pilot, thank you Jesus, has been tested and he's approved and that they've checked the aircraft. Gosh, we put so much stock, so much faith into our pilots and shout out, thank you. Like it's just amazing. Um, and so I'm always filled with gratitude. The second thing is I always remember a story that I heard when I was young about a pilot that was out west. And so if you don't know this about pilots, you, obviously you go through testing, you get your license. And, and so this young man, he, he, he went through all of the testing. He, he got certified. He was good. He had his license and he was taking a short trip. And now while he was taking a trip and he, and he took off in his aircraft, when he was in flight, you know, they've got all their gauges, the, the whole cockpit's full of gauges. And this was a personal aircraft, not a commercial. And, and so you got your horizontal and, and your pitch and 
look, I'm not a pilot. I don't have the right terminology, okay? I'm a pastor. And, but, but he's checking all of his gauges. But what happened while he was flying is he got vertigo. Now, if you don't know what vertigo is, basically, it's a loss of balance. And pending the severity of vertigo for you, you can literally think that you're upside down. Well, this pilot, while he was flying, he did think that he was upside down. So while he's flying... He's going and he literally turns the plane upside down to correct what he thought was going on inside of his head. He was being led by his emotions and eyewitnesses, people that saw this happen, they said that when he crashed the airplane, unfortunately he did, when he drove, he drove it right into the ground, he was completely upside down. Now, unfortunately, the pilot didn't make it. It was, it was very tragic, but because of his vertigo, he thought he, was up, he, he thought he was upside down and so he actually turned himself upside down. And, and I think you and I, sometimes we become upside down and we have spiritual vertigo. Spir and we might not even know that we are spiritually vertigo. See, you and I, we are a three-part being. We, 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 ha we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. And it's so easy to become spiritually vertigo and spiritually upside down. See, God the Father, we are, we are just like God. God created us in his image. We are, God is a three-part being and so are we. So God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, they are three in one. And God created us in his likeness. Now watch what Paul said. I just love this. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, he said, now may the God of peace, the God of peace, the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until that day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. We are a three-part being just like God and God designed you with three distinct parts. Our spirit, our soul, and our body. We are a three-part being. And I'm gonna talk about those three parts today. We're gonna jump right in. You could write this down. You could write down spirit. We're gonna talk about our spirit for a second. And so this is the part of me. This is the part of you that will live forever. Forever, right? God is a spirit. And with the spirit, we connect with the spiritual realm. It's the part of us, the part of you and I that knows God. See, God created our spirit so that we could be on his level. In John 4, Jesus said to the woman at the well, he said, he said that God is a spirit. So the moment that we are saved, the moment that we make Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior of our life and we commit our life to him, we, we are made alive in Christ Jesus, forever redeemed and made righteous before the Father. And along with that gift of eternal life, we also receive the Holy Spirit and immediately we have the ability to be in relationship with God and we become one. I, I like to think about it this way. I don't know if you can remember. Do you remember when you made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life? Like that moment that you were sitting in church or that moment that you were on the other end of the screen and you were sitting there and the pastor or, or your friend was about to lead you to Jesus and, and you could feel your heart racing. Right, And it was such a peace, God is a God of peace. It was a peaceful feeling. You're overwhelmed with joy. Maybe you had tears of joy and it was just that, that giddy, exciting feeling when you were coming to the Lord. I like to think about it this way and I, I just dream with God sometimes. And, and you know, I like to think about the Holy Spirit coming, rushing as the pastor or your friend is leading you to Jesus. He comes rushing in. He's got like, he comes in with his ambulance, right? He's the, he's the EMT worker and, and he comes ru rushing in and all of a sudden he gets out of the ambulance, shuts the door, walks around to the back and, and as he goes to the back, he gets out the defibrillator and, he, and as he's got it, he's sitting near the pastors preaching to you and I, right? Your friends are, are leading us to Jesus and, and he's got the paddles, he starts to charge him and, and all of a sudden the, the pastor begins to lead you in our prayer and the Holy Spirit walks over and literally zaps your chest and your spirit man becomes alive. I, I just like to play around with God. I like the dream and but I picture God being an EMT worker and, 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 and showing up the Holy Spirit, waking up your spirit man so that you can become one with Jesus and have relationship with him because your spirit was designed to communicate with God 
to worship God and it will last forever. Even the Bible says in Ephesians 2 that, that God made us alive in Christ Jesus. God made us alive. In 1 Corinthians 6, 17, but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. That EMT worker, the Holy Spirit showing up, our helper, our comforter, our teacher, our leader, our guider, right? Boom, zaps you and, and, and our spirit awakens. And our spirit is what connects us with God. The second thing I want you to write down, because remember we're a three-part being. We've got a spirit. We also have a soul, right? So our soul, it's our natural realm. It's the intellect or the sensibility. It's the part of us that knows We are made in the image of God with the capacity to think, reason, and express emotions. Emotions. And and you know, God could have programmed us to do and say whatever he wanted us to say, but he didn't. He gave you and I free will and the ability to choose what we want to do when we want to do it. See, the, the soul was made up of three parts. The mind, will, and emotions. And so the mind is is the part of us which thinks and reasons. Our will is the part of us that makes decisions. Well, I think I'm going to wake up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat some Apple Jacks. That sounds good, right? Like, like it's, the, it's, it's the will. It's the one that makes choices. It's the, it's the part of us that decides at midnight, am I going to eat a turkey sandwich with extra mayonnaise, lettuce, cheese, and I know it's midnight, and then we wake up and we're like, God, what is going on? How did I gain weight? Like, not that this is a personal story reflecting myself, but, but we've all experienced it, right? That's what the will is. It's the one, it's the part of us that's making the choices. And then the emotions. It's, it's, it's the part of us that, that believes, that feels, that remembers. Do you remember last week Alyssa's message when she talked about our emotions and what are we going to do with them? Like, are you going to be led by your emotions? Or are you going to be led by facts and what God says? Watch this. The Bible says in James 1.21, the word of God has the power to save your soul. The word of God has the power to save your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. And what is it talking about? It's talking about renewing your mind daily, renewing your mind. In fact, Romans 12.2 says this, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. It's talking about renewing your mind according to the word and the will of God. We got to renew our mind daily. I read this book and... uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. It's by Sean Covey. And in fact, if you haven't read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens, I, I encourage you to, I implore you to read this book. It'll be so impactful to you. But, but one of the things he talks about is he talks about our thought life. And he says, our thoughts turn into actions. Our actions turn into habits. Our habits turn into character and our character turns into a destiny. You've got to take your thoughts captive and submit them to God. Or you, if you are dwelling on negative things, it could lead you down a road that you don't want to go down, that you have no business going down, that's not God's plan for your life. And how do we take thoughts captive? How do we submit our thoughts according to the word of God? How do you do that? That's what the Bible says to do. But how do we do that? Because you and I, we cannot control the thought that pops in our head. Boop, the dart that just shoots in of this, whatever it might be. You can't control thoughts. So how do you take them captive? Well, I'll tell you. You take them captive by speaking God's word over that situation. Let me say it this way. You can't think something negative and say something positive. You can't do it. Have you ever tried? It's like trying to rub your head in your belly at the same time. Like you, you can't do it, okay? If you can, send me, send me a video of it. Post it, tag me. Like let me, let me know, but you cannot do it. You cannot say something positive and think something negative at the same time. You can't do it. And that's how we take thoughts captive. We drown out negative thoughts according to the word of God and what God says about the situation, period. We got to take our thoughts captive, speak God's word out loud, and we need to renew our mind according to the word of God. Listen, I, I just want you to catch this. If you catch 
anything out of this whole entire message today, I want you to catch this one thing. This is so important. This is so important. You know, sea ships, while they're at sea, over a long period of time, they, they collect a bunch of barnacles and, 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 they, and they gather all along the hull of the ship. And if the ship is left unchecked or not maintained in that area, the barnacles will actually, it, it'll weigh down the ship and cause the ship to capsize, cause it to sink. But fun fact, what they do is, is they take sea ships and they'll take them to a fresh water harbor. And while sitting in fresh water, the barnacles literally will begin to fall off on their own. It's the cheapest and most effective way to clean the ship, to keep it from sinking. Do you remember what Jesus told the, the woman at the well? He said, I am the living water. Drink of me and you'll never thirst again. You could say fresh water. He is refreshing. We need the rest in the word of God because in James 1.21, the word of God has the power to save your soul, to save your soul. When we get into the word of God, it refreshes us and it helps. It takes the barnacles of life and they literally fall off when you're sitting in God's word. The things that are weighing us down, fear, worry, doubt, anxiety, depression, it literally, it, the, God's word refreshes our soul and the barnacles of life fall off. The weight of life falls off. It's so important. It's so important. And then the last thing I want you to write down, it's our body. And we're gonna close on this. It's our flesh. It's, it, it's our physical, it's the physical realm. It's what we're experiencing. Like it's our flesh and blood. It's our body. Our body is what we contact the physical realm with. Our body is the part of us it, that houses. It's the house in which we live it. It houses our spirit and our soul, the body acts as a temporary house or a shell that contains our soul and our spirit. Do you remember when Jesus died? You know, we just, we just came out of Easter, the biggest holiday for us, right? When Jesus died at death, when, 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 they, when that happened, the veil of the temple was torn and the presence of God moved out of the structure and into the hearts of the believers, into, into all the hearts of you and I, right? And we shouldn't do anything to intentionally harm our bodies because God has given them to us in order for us to carry out plans that he has for us to do on this earth. I don't know if you've ever caught whenever the news anchor or the news is saying, you, you hear them, I'm Tom Brokaw, and their body was found. <laughs> That was horrible. But, but you'll hear the news anchor say that a body was found under the river or, or I mean, a, a, along the side of the river, under the bridge, they found a man's body. And they act like it's his. Well, well that's not his body. It's not his possession because, because they're saying it's his possession, but who owns the body? The spirit owns the body. The spirit, your spirit man is the real you. That's the part of you that needs born again. Just like when the Holy Spirit comes as an EMT worker and shocks you, boom, and you come to life and, and you become one with God. That's the part of you that needs born again. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells and dwells within you. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. Look, I, I'm gonna leave us with this. This is our go and do. This is our action step for this week, if you will. I want you to take a look at, at yourself. I want you to evaluate yourself. Which one are you spending the majority of your time on? Is it your spirit? Is it your body? Or is it your soul? And who is leading you? See, the pilot, he was vertigo. He was upside down and it caused him to wreck. It caused him to crash. And, and you and I, we can become spiritually vertigo. And how we correct that, you, and in fact, you might not even know that right now you're spiritually vertigo. And I think you can answer it this way. Are you spending time nurturing your spirit, your spirit man, by reading God's word daily? getting into what God says about you. This is renewing your mind, your soul, 
because your soul is what dictates what you're going to do, whether you're going to lean towards your flesh or you're going to lean towards your spirit and be spirit-led, as the Bible says. And, and are you reading the word? Are you praying? Are you listening to worship music? Are you, are you listening to podcasts and stirring up your spirit within you? Or are you feeding your body what, you're, what, you're, what you want? I just, get the heart wants what the heart wants. Are you staying up all night and you're on TikTok or you're on Instagram and you're, you're, you're feeding your body things that eat your peace? Or are you feeding, are, are you, through your soul, are you feeding your spirit the things that bring you peace? Because God is peace. I'd encourage you to evaluate yourself. And to ask yourself, are you letting your soul take over and being driven by your decisions, your mind, your will, your emotions, your soul? Or are you letting God lead you and being spirit led? What are you feeding? So I want to close in prayer and I want to pray for you right now, wherever you're at. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone on the other end of this screen. That Lord, you're doing such a mighty work in us right now that you're stirring us. You're helping us, God. Would you give us the strength, Holy Spirit, give us the strength to continue to chase after you and things of you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that you're, you're doing something new. You're awakening our spirit, that we're not spiritually callous, God. We want to chase after the things that you have for us and chase after your word, and we want to be spirit-led, God. We want to be more like you and into the things that you're into, Father. So I thank you for giving us uh, such a strong courage, a, a, a courage that's contagious, that others, that they, as they see us chase after you, that they're stirred to chase after the things of you, Lord. We just thank you. We love you more than life itself, and I thank you for giving us supernatural strength to continue to grow in a relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And now right now, you know, maybe you've never made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life and your spirit's never been awoken. You've not become one with the Lord, like I said when I was talking about our spirit. So if you've not made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, I wanna pray with you. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man comes to the Father except through me. There's nothing that you can do. There's no acts of service or, or whatever that can buy your way into heaven. It's your relationship with Jesus. That's it. It's only Jesus, period. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if we believe in our heart and we declare with our mouth that Jesus was raised, that he died from the cross, died on the cross and raised from the dead three days later, that we'll be saved. And so in a moment, we're all going to pray together. As I'm not gonna embarrass you, I'm not gonna single you out, and I don't know who you're around in your living room right now or whatever that looks like, but, but we're gonna pray together and I believe that God is gonna come into your heart. Jesus is gonna come into your life and you're gonna be saved, you're heaven bound, and your spirit's awoken to have relationship with Jesus. So will you bow your heads right now? And if this is you, right now, I want you to just say out loud, Jesus, I receive you. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pray together right now where you're at, everybody that's in the room, pray with me. Heavenly Father, say it loud enough where you can hear it. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I believe with all my heart, that you died on the cross for me and my sins. I make you Lord of my life. I'm a child of God and I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hey, congratulations, I'm so excited for you. I love you guys and I cannot wait to see you next week. Hey, man, if you made that decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, man, heaven is throwing a party for you right now. We would love to get a devotional into your hands. I promise we're not going to blow up your phone, but go ahead and text SOZO, S-O-Z-O, to 97000 so we can get you plugged in with that devotional. Now, don't forget, small groups are starting immediately when this live stream ends. So get connected to a small group. If you tuned in halfway through and you missed it, that's okay. You can text the keywords to 81010. They're right below me. We'll get you plugged into a small group. You can find freedom and get connected with your peers. Man, we're so excited that you guys came to our live stream service tonight, and we can't wait to see you next week.